This ghastly state of things is what you call bun burying, I suppose. Yes. And a perfectly wonderful Bunbury it is. The most wonderful Bunbury I've ever had in my life. Well, you've no right whatsoever to Bunbury here. That is absurd. One has a right to Bunbury anywhere one chooses. Every serious Bunburyus knows that. Seriest Bunburyist! Good heavens. Well, one must be serious about something if one wants to have any amusement in life. I happen to be serious about Bunbury. What on earth are you serious about? I haven't got the remotest idea. About everything I should fancy. You have such an absolutely trivial nature. Well, the only small satisfaction I have in the whole of this wretched business is that your friend Bun Baring has quite exploded. You won't be able to run down to the country quite so often as you used to, dear Algy. <laughs> and a very good thing, too. Your brother is a little off color, isn't he, dear Jack? You won't be able to disappear to London quite so frequently as your wicked custom was. And not a bad thing, either. As for your conduct towards Miss Cardew, I must say that you're taking in a sweet, simple, innocent girl like that is quite inexcusable to say nothing of the fact that she is my ward. I can see no possible defense at all for your deceiving a brilliant, clever, thoroughly experienced young lady like Miss Fairfax, to say nothing of the fact that she is my cousin. I wanted to be engaged to Gwendolyn, that is all. I love her. Well, I simply wanted to be engaged to Cecily. I adore her. There is certainly no chance of your marrying Miss Cardew. I don't think there's much likelihood, Jack, of you and Miss Fairfax being united. Well, that is no business of yours. If it was my business, I wouldn't talk about it. It is very vulgar to talk about one's business. The only people like stockbrokers do that, and then merely at... Mm, dinner parties. How can you sit there? Calmly eating muffins when we are in this horrible trouble. I can't make out. You seem to me to be perfectly heartless. Well, I can't eat muffins in an agitated manner. The butter would probably get on my cuffs. Mm, one should always eat muffins quite calmly. <laughs> it's the only way to eat them. I say it's perfectly heartless you're eating muffins at all, under the circumstances. Mm, when I am in trouble, eating is the only thing that consoles me. Indeed, when I'm in a really great trouble, as anyone who knows me intimately will tell you, I refuse everything except for food and drink. At the present moment, I am eating muffins because I am unhappy. Besides, I am particularly fond of muffins. Well, that is no reason why you should eat them all in that greedy way. I wish you would have tea cake instead. I don't like tea cake. Good heavens! I suppose a man may eat his own muffins in his own garden. But you have just said it was perfectly heartless to eat muffins. <laughs> I said it was perfectly heartless of you. Under the circumstances, that is a very different thing. That may be. But the muffins are the same. Algy, I wish to goodness you would go. You can't possibly ask me to go without having some dinner. It's absurd. I never go without my dinner. No one ever does except for vegetarians and people like... That. Besides, I have just made arrangements with Dr. Chesterbill to be christened at a quarter to six under the name of Ernest. My dear fellow, the sooner you give up that nonsense, the better... I made arrangements this morning with Dr. Chossible to be christened myself at 5.30. And I naturally will take the name of... Ernest. Gwendolyn would wish it. We can't both be christened Ernest. It's absurd. Besides, I have a perfect right to be christened if I like. There is no evidence at all that I have ever been christened by anybody. I should think it extremely probable I never was, and so does Dr. Chossible. It is entirely different in your case... You have been christened already. Yes, but I have not been christened for years. Yes, but you have been christened. That is the important thing. Mm. Quite so. So I know my constitution can stand it. If you're not quite sure about your ever having been christened, I must say I think it rather dangerous you venturing on it now. It might make you very unwell. You can hardly have forgotten that someone very closely related to you was nearly carried off this week in Paris by a... Severe chill. Yes, but you said yourself that a severe chill 
was not hereditary. It used to be, I know, but I dare say it is now. Science is always making wonderful improvements in things. <laughs> that is nonsense. You're always talking nonsense. Jack! You are at the muffins again. I wish you wouldn't. There are only two left, and I told you I was particularly fond of muffins. But I hate tea cake. Why on earth, then, do you allow tea cake to be served up for your guests? What ideas you have of hospitality? Algeron, I've already told you to go. I don't want you here. Why don't you go? I haven't quite finished my tea yet. And there is still one muffin left. 